All right. It's awesome all you guys are here today. Today we're talking about Easter, and it's not going to be your usual Easter message. Don't like to do things the usual way. So, let's pray. Dear Jesus, we love you. We thank you that you died on the cross for our sins. God, uh, each of us are a sinner. Everyone's a sinner, God. You made a way. You are the way. Through the cross, through the empty tomb, you give the opportunity for each of us to accept new life. I pray that each person here today would know this extension of your love is being offered to them. You are love, Jesus. Thank you for loving us. God, I pray that you somehow speak through me. Amen. All right. Uh, one day, uh, shy third grade Brady and uh, rambunctious, big glasses, second grade Kyle were uh, getting ready for school. And we were like always late for school. Anyone else always late for class? Still? Yeah, and it was our dad's fault because our dad, he would always drop us off on the way to work. So then one morning, Kyle and I were whining like usual. We're like, Dad, come on, come on, come on. And then things got dark fast. And you guys all remember this day. All of a sudden, my, my mom urgently yelled, boys, come downstairs. And we're in the living room watching the TV and we see the first plane crash. It had crashed and hit the World Trade Center. My parents are like, boys, sit down. This is history. You need to see this. You can be late for school. And as we sat there on the couch, live, we saw the second plane hit the second tower. And as we were all just shocked, stunned, silence, like America was under attack. We are under attack. And I think all of you that are old enough remember this day, September 11th, 2001. Everyone in America that day, we shared a feeling, an unspoken shared feeling of fear that our world would never be the same. And like Kyle and I lived near Chicago at that time and we all thought the Sears Tower, the tallest building in America was next. Because of 9-11, because of this drastic event, things changed. TSA was created. Airplane cockpits, cockpits were now bulletproof and locked. Box cutters and knives were no longer allowed in airplanes, and now you have to for sure show your ID to go on a plane. Who would have thought all these things that are normal for us now? And the war on terror had begun. But what if 9-11 never happened? Our world would be a different place. What if the coronavirus never happened? Our world would be a different place. What if the attack on Pearl Harbor never happened? Hawaii would be a different place. What if the fake missile alert never happened? That shocked us all to death. Our life would be different if all these big events never happened. These events, it's like cause and effect. They provoked fear into our life. Today we celebrate an event that produces hope in all of our lives. And we want to share this event with everyone. This event, the resurrection of Jesus, defines us, changes us, and gives us the victory. Because Jesus died, he was dead for three days and rose again, and our lives will never be the same. The battle is done, Jesus has won. He gives us the victory over sin, death, and the devil. But, we're mixing it up today. What if Jesus stayed dead? What if this week they found Jesus' bones in the Middle East? All year, every Sunday, we talk about Jesus dying on the cross and rising again. Every Sunday we talk about this. A survey done last week by Lifeway Research shows that 72% of Americans believe Jesus was God, died, and rose again three days later for our sins. 72% of Americans believe this as a factual event. So why does this matter? What difference does it make? Do we live like we believe this is a factual event? Today in the Bible, we're looking at some Bible verses in 1 Corinthians 15 that show what our lives would be like if Jesus did not rise again from the dead. 
What if he stayed dead? As you guys can open up your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 15, 12 through 19. Our celebration today is pending on Jesus rising from the dead. So today we're focusing on what if that didn't happen. So 1 Corinthians 15, 12 through 19. All right, and a little background here. This book, 1 Corinthians, is a letter um, by this guy named Paul to some Christians in a church in a city called Corinth. And this was a letter. Paul was one of the greatest missionaries of all time. And in this section of verses that we're reading, the people, the Christians that he were writing to, they were Christians, but they did not believe in an afterlife. They did not believe in heaven. This doesn't make sense. They believed like your life on earth was it. And as we would say like 10 years ago, YOLO. Yeah, this is it. We live for today. And in these verses, Paul explains the impact the resurrection has on our lives. And also the word resurrection is kind of like Christianese, like who even says that? Resurrection means raised from the dead, come back to life. So I'm going to say come back to life. Um, so 1 Corinthians 15, 12 through 19. Uh, Paul is writing this. He says, But tell me this, since we preach that Christ rose from the dead, why are some of you saying there will be no resurrection of the dead? For if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, then all of our preaching is useless, and your faith is useless. And we apostles would all be lying about God, for we have said that God raised Christ from the grave. But that can't be true if there is no resurrection of the dead. And if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless, and you are still gu guilty of your sins. In that case, all who have died believing in Christ are lost. And if our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are more to be pitied than anyone in the world. So in these verses, there are five main things, how our life, how the world would be different if Jesus did not come back to life. The first one is, we would have no hope of heaven. In uh, verse 13, and verse 16 say the same exact thing. If you notice, it just repeated itself. Verse 13 and verse 16. Like, the resurrection of Jesus and the resurrection of the dead, meaning us going to heaven when we die, they go hand in hand. You cannot have one without the other. It's either both or neither. And verse 19 says, if our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are more to be pitied than anyone in the world. So if our hope is in Jesus just for YOLO, for living for now, we are supposed to be, we're laughed at. Like, what kind of faith is that? Um, like, if Jesus stayed dead, everyone's eternal destiny is hell. When we die, we would deserve never-ending punishment and pain. Meaning our lives here on earth would have no impact for forever. What we do here would not matter at all. Do what makes us feel good. Yeah, live for today. Because this is as good as it gets. Um, we have no purpose to life. Nothing else would matter except now. If Jesus stayed dead, we would have no hope of heaven. The second thing that would be different if Jesus stayed dead is our preaching would be useless. Um, verse 14 says, If Christ has not been raised, then all our preaching is useless. Um, so if Jesus stayed dead, the Bible would be false. Because um, prophets from the Old Testament... And Jesus himself said that he was going to raise in three days. And if he didn't, Jesus would be a liar. Jesus would be a false prophet. Meaning every sermon we say would just be a good TED talk. And maybe you've been to churches like that. Every sermon, every Bible study you listen to would be worthless. Because the author, Jesus, would be a liar if he did not raise from the dead. And verse 15 says... And we apostles would all be lying about God, for we have said that God raised Christ from the grave. So these apostles, like the 12 disciples and stuff, they died for their faith in Jesus. And would they really die for a liar? And us as Christians today, we would be liars too if we're sharing. It wouldn't be the good news. It'd just be news. Telling about a good person from long ago. If Jesus stayed dead, our preaching would be worthless. The third thing that would be different if Jesus stayed dead, 
in verse 14, it says, if Christ has not been raised, your faith is useless. So we can have faith in a lot of different things, like the chair you're sitting in right now, like good surf conditions and you paddle out, your favorite sports team that always fails you, but your faith can only be as strong as the object you are putting your faith in. Um, Tim Keller, a well-known pastor and author in New York City, he says, it is not the strength of your faith, but the object of your faith that actually saves you. Yeah. Strong faith in a weak branch is fatally inferior to weak, to weak faith in a strong branch. So if Jesus stayed dead, he would, be, he would be a weak branch to put our faith in. He would be an untrustworthy person to trust. And his promises for you would not be true. If Jesus stayed dead, our faith would be useless. The fourth thing that would be different if Jesus stayed dead is we would be stuck in our sins. Now verse 17 says, if Christ has not been raised, then you are still guilty of your sins. The Bible is pretty straight up here. Like Jesus dying on the cross, as we remembered on Good Friday, is only half the story. Easter is what makes Friday good. Like Jesus willingly, sacrificially took the punishment of your sins on his shoulders because he loves you and cares for you. But if Jesus stayed dead, he would not have the victory over death to transfer to you. We would be lost without hope, no place to begin. For the wages of sin is death, but if Jesus stayed dead, there would be no forgiveness of sins. In our lives, the power of sin would not be broken. And because we are sinners, we would go to hell. If Jesus stayed dead, we would be stuck in our sins. And the last thing the verses say here, if Jesus stayed dead, all Christians who died before us would be in hell. Uh, verse 18 says, in that case, all who have died believing in Christ are lost. So just like we are stuck in our sins, everybody else who died before us that are Christians would go to hell. So if Jesus stayed dead, all your family and friends who've died before you would be in hell. Hell is not a cool, fun thing to talk about. It's a real place. And these verses in the Bible here say if Jesus stayed dead, this is what would happen, these five things. To sum it up, if Jesus did not rise again from the dead, we would be hopeless. And if you are a Christian today, meaning you have surrendered your life to Jesus, he is your savior for the forgiveness of your sins, ask yourself, are you living as if Jesus did not come back to life? Do you feel hopeless? Do you feel purposeless? Do you live for YOLO? Do you trust God? Verse 19 says, and if our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are more to be pitied than anyone in the world. Okay, that was all really sad. All right. That's what makes the good news good. The contrast. The rest is good. If you look at verse 20, it says, but in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. He is the first of a great harvest of all who have died. You can have hope because Jesus has kept hope alive. He is risen. He is risen indeed. And because of Jesus' resurrection, the world will never be the same. It changes how you live and who you are. And as Christians, sometimes the gospel, which is the good news about Jesus, can feel like old news. Because maybe you grew up going to church or maybe we talk about this every Sunday, maybe we take for granted the forgiveness of our sins. Like, we'll sin sometimes and be like, oh, yeah, I just won't do it again. But you like, maybe you forget to ask for forgiveness and repent, you know? Like, it's very routine. But Jesus' resurrection gives you peace, hope, and joy, and it completely changes your life. And today, Easter is a celebration where we really, really, really remember this, what Jesus did for us. And I'm going to share a moment that brought me great joy in my life and how we can have this same great joy about Jesus today. Um, this is really exciting. It happened about nine years ago. I listened to this moment on the radio. Marley did too. <laughs> I played this clip two years ago on Easter as well. I'm, I'm really bragging about my brother Kyle right there. It was Kyle's senior year of high school. <laughs> I didn't tell him I was doing this. So, he was the starting point guard for the varsity basketball team. 
the semifinal playoff game. A tie game, eight seconds left. Kyle has the ball. In this clip here, the announcer calls Kyle Arneson. That's his last name. So listen for Arneson. This clip brought me great joy. And this is the excitement that we can have today, contrasted with all the sadness we just talked about. So take a listen. And we're tied. Boston with the ball. Eight seconds left. Beacon with it to Carlene. Carlene with it. Carlene knocked away. Arneson at the buzzer. Got it. I got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. The Greyhounds have won. The Greyhounds have won. The Greyhounds have won. The Greyhounds have won. Kyle Arneson hits it at the buzzer. Holy moly, Rocky. There's no way to do it, Kyle. Arneson hits the three. And the Greyhounds. By going to the section championship, the cast leg the Panthers are stunned, and Kyle Artisan delivers a shot of the lifetime, a shot you can only dream about. Artisan hits the three at the buzzer, and the Greyhounds are one win away from a trip to the state tournament. So I was the proudest brother ever in this moment. I was running around my college dorm telling everyone, I was crying, and I called Marley who was hours away, and she didn't answer because she was rolling on the floor crying as well. This was the greatest moment in our school's basketball history. The shot heard around the region. Kyle became a city celebrity. Kyle kept hope alive for his team. And this is the same excitement we can have about Jesus today. He did it. He did it. Jesus has won. Jesus has won. Holy moly. Rock and moly. That's the way to do it, Jesus. The devil was stunned at the buzzer when all hope was lost. Jesus did what you could only dream about. For hundreds of years, they were thinking maybe this would happen. And it did. The shot of a lifetime. The resurrection is real. It matters. And Jesus brings hope to your life. The five points that we just shared about what if Jesus stayed dead, in the opposite sense, these are all true because Jesus is not dead. Jesus is alive. The opposite of these th five things are true. So, because Jesus came back to life, we have hope of heaven. Jesus' resurrection and our resurrection when we die go hand in hand. He is the first of a great harvest of all who have died. Everyone who believes in Jesus as their Savior from sin will be saved. That's a promise from our living Jesus. Um, we'll be in heaven forever with each other in paradise. It's going to be great. It's a, it's a continuation of what we have now, but perfect. Jesus brings purpose to your life. Loving Jesus, loving others, and making disciples. That is why you are alive. And what we do for Jesus now matters for eternity. Because Jesus came back to life, our preaching is worth it. Jesus' resurrection verifies the Bible as true. And we are called to share this good word with everyone so they can be saved as well. It's worth it to learn about Jesus and to grow closer in our relationship with Jesus. And listen to what he's speaking to you through the Bible every day as you read it. And because Jesus came back to life, our faith is worth it. We can fully trust God with everything that he's given us. We can give it all right back to him. He is the strongest object of your faith you can choose to trust your life with. His promise says for you, are always true. And because Jesus came back to life, you are freed from your sins. Jesus has the victory over sin. He has given this victory to you if you simply want to receive it. He has broken the power of sin. He forgives you of your sin when you repent and turn to him. He multiplies your sin by zero, meaning no matter how many sins you have, it's times zero. Zero equals zero, and you will go to heaven because of what Jesus has done for you. And lastly, because Jesus came back to life, you'll get to see all your family and friends that were Christians in heaven when Jesus returns or when you die, whatever comes first. This is the hope we have because Jesus came back to life. In conclusion, Jesus did not stay dead. He came back to life, and he is alive in heaven today. And as Christians, he lives through us right now. If you are a Christian, Jesus is living through you. He changes you, and he defines you. Your identity is in Jesus. And we celebrate the hope we have 
only because of Jesus. He is the way, and we remember that today. But today, if you are not a Christian, you are living as if Jesus stayed dead. The first five points that we talked about are true for you. Maybe you feel like you have no hope. Maybe you feel like YOLO, like so what, we get drunk, so what, we smoke weed, we don't care, who sees, you know, that's the life. Everyone lives. Is that what you're living for? Maybe you go to church on Christmas and Easter. I'm glad you're here today. But I want to see more of you, yeah? Let's be friends all year. Maybe you think your faith is worthless. That Jesus is worthless. Maybe you feel stuck in your sin. I can just not dig my way out of this. Like, what happens when you die? What do you believe about the afterlife? Uh, like reincarnation or whatever, or nothing. Or it doesn't matter, you know, like Mother Earth, disrespect the Aina, yeah? Like, what do you believe about the afterlife? I am sharing you today what I believe and what the gathering believes, what the Bible says about the afterlife. Like, Jesus loves you, he cares about you, and he is keeping hope alive for you, and he is waiting for you to surrender your life to him. We are all sinners. I'm not any better than you are. I am very open about my struggles, past, present, hopefully not in the future. We're all a work in progress. But when you give your life to Jesus, Jesus acknowledges, yes, you are a work in progress, and I'm working on you. I have my Holy Spirit in you, and you're becoming more and more like me every day until you get to heaven. And we're all on this journey together, and if you're here today just because it's Easter, or if you have not surrendered your life to Jesus yet, now is the perfect time to do it. If you feel hopeless because of some stuff that happened this month, you don't know what your future holds, you can know who holds your future, and that is Jesus Christ. He wants to be a big, big part of your life. And if you want to surrender your life to Jesus right now, you can simply say this prayer, repeat after me. It's very simple because to be saved, you have to do nothing. Jesus has done it all. He paid it all on the cross. All you have to do is receive what Jesus has done for you. Open hands, open heart. And as a gathering, we're a community that loves each other and we love Jesus. And we do what we do for this right now. We want you to know Jesus loves you. We want Jesus to come into your life. Will you let him come into your life at this very moment? So if you'd like, if you'd like to give your life to Jesus right now, um, everyone, you can close your eyes if you want to. And if you are already a Christian, you can just repeat this prayer after me as a reminder of what Jesus has done for you. But if you've never given your life to Jesus before, or maybe you grew up going to church with your parents, and then since college you haven't really gone anymore, that's cool. I'm glad you're here today. Today you know Jesus loves you, and if you want to accept Jesus into your life right now, you can just repeat this prayer after me as a surrender. Dear Jesus, I am a sinner. Thank you for dying on the cross and rising again to give me new life. Please forgive me of my sins. I surrender my life to you. You are my savior. Thank you for loving me and watching over me. I love you, Jesus. Amen. If you said that prayer, you are saved. Your eternal destiny is heaven. Amen. Praise Jesus. And if you said that prayer for the first time or any time, tell someone else. Say, hey, I accepted Jesus into my heart today. Or come tell me. We'd love to pray with you and walk with you on this new journey that you have. Amen.